So let's say you want to become a saint, a role model for Christian life, venerated by over a billion faithful and on call 24-7 to pray for anyone who asks. Well, becoming a saint is easy. Just die and go to heaven. Technically, this is the only requirement, as this is the church's definition of a saint. But if you actually want to be recognized by the church with an official feast day and have churches named after you, then you need to go through the process of canonization, a process you won't be alive for. Normally, the canonization process doesn't begin into at least five years after the person's death. However, the Pope can waive this waiting period. But let's say five years have passed and the bishop of the diocese, the local church leader of the place where the person was from, grants permission for the process to officially begin with an investigation of the person's life. At this point, the person is called Servant of God. This signals that the person is a candidate for canonization, and to that end, an association is set up to gather testimony about the person's life and evidence of their virtues. Their speeches and writings are gathered, eyewitness testimonies are collected, and a detailed biography is made. This step can take years, but once enough evidence is gathered, it is presented to the Congregation for the Causes of the Saints, a department of the Roman Curia, the administrative arm of the Holy See, the central government of the entire Catholic Church. At this stage, the public veneration of a servant of God is strictly prohibited. This means no public displays of pictures of the person, nor public prayers that invoke the person's name. The presence of prohibited veneration before church approval can end the candidacy of a servant of God. The Congregation for the Causes of the Saints also makes sure that there are no superstitious or otherwise heretical worship of the servant of God, because saints are not supposed to be worshipped. The congregation then decides whether there is enough evidence to support a decree of heroic virtues, that is, whether the servant of God exercised to a heroic degree the virtues of faith, hope, charity, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. If the congregation decides that there is enough evidence, they make the recommendation to the Pope, who can reject it. But if approved, the servant of God officially becomes venerable. At this point, the church has yet to make any statements about whether the person is in heaven. But to help determine this, the faithful are encouraged to ask for a miracle through the venerable's intercession, as a sign from God that the person is in heaven. If a miracle is alleged, a scientific commission is established to determine whether there can be any natural explanation for it. Usually these miracles are medical in nature, such as cures for illnesses that doctors concluded were incurable. If the scientific commission finds that there is no natural explanation, then a theological commission must determine whether this unnatural event was truly a miracle from God wrought through the intercession of the Venerable. If they are satisfied that such is the case, it is reported back to the congregation. If the congregation agrees that a miracle has occurred, their judgment is forwarded to the Pope to approve a decree of a miracle. This miracle requirement can be waived for martyrs, so that the congregation must simply establish that the Venerable voluntarily died because of the faith or in an act of heroic charity for others. Their determination is forwarded to the Pope to approve a decree of martyrdom. Thus, with one of these decrees, the Venerable can now be beatified. The rite of beatification is usually done by the Prefect of the Congregation for the Causes of the Saints, the department head. During the rite, he reads the Pope's apostolic letter, which says, Acceding to the request of our brother, of many other of our brothers in the episcopate, and many of the faithful, after consultation with the congregation for the causes of the saints, by our apostolic authority, we declare that the venerable servant of God shall henceforth be invoked as blessed, and that their feast shall be celebrated every year on, in the places and according to the norms established by church law. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From this time on, the Venerable Servant of God is called Blessed. This is a statement by the Church that it is worthy of belief to think that the person is in heaven, meaning that Catholics are allowed to believe it, even encouraged but not commanded to. And so, the feast day, the special day of celebration for the Blessed, is limited to the local communities that have a special attachment to the Blessed. For example, when Pope John Paul II was beatified, the places where his feast day could be celebrated were Poland, where he was born, and Rome, where he was bishop. And at this point, churches still cannot be named in honor of the person. That is reserved for saints. 
After beatification, a second miracle must be attributed to the blessed, using the same process as before, so that they can be canonized a saint. This is seen as confirmation of God's will, that the person be recognized a saint. The second miracle requirement can be waived, however, if the Pope believes that there is already enough evidence to prove the person's saintliness. So once a second miracle or a waiver is approved, the blessed is declared a saint during the canonization ceremony presided over by the Pope himself, in which he proclaims the following. For the honor of the Blessed Trinity, the exaltation of the Catholic faith, and the increase of the Christian life, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, and of the holy apostles Peter and Paul and our own, after due deliberation, and frequent prayer for divine assistance, and having sought the counsel of many of our brother bishops, we declare and define blessed to be a saint, and we enroll them among the saints, decreeing that they are to be venerated as such by the whole church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a statement by the Church that Catholics should believe that the person is in heaven, and is therefore worthy of being honored throughout the Church. Thus, their feast day can be celebrated everywhere, and churches named in their honor. So that's how you become a saint. If you liked this video, of course, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your friends, and consider supporting more amazingly informative videos like this one by becoming a patron on patreon.com amazingly. Thank you.